Hi guys, it's Nancy, and this video is going to show you how to swatch out your foils. Now, um, specifically Crafty Krita foils, when you order from Crafty Krita, they send out these swatch sheets, and I'm going to show you how to do that on the toner foils, which I have here, and how to do it on the new hot foils. Now, hot foils don't have this black um, toner because hot foils will stick to everything. You don't need that toner, but toner foil needs that. So let me show you how to do that. And there's actually a couple of different ways. So the first way is um, for toner foils. Again, you want to keep these packaged. They, they usually send you to match the amount of foils that you purchased. Okay. And all you're going to do is take your toner foil, and if you want to make it nice and neat, you can dusty, dusty. I do recommend trying to cover the whole um, square. I forgot my carrier sheet. And if you can't cover the whole square, what's going to happen is these black lines are going to get stuck on the, on your toner on your carrier sheet, which is not bad, but you don't really you don't want those on there. So. You'll see here I have cut this piece down um, and you'll notice that the toner is exposed, the black lines are exposed. If I run this through the mink right now, those black lines will transfer to my folder. So what you're gonna do is you're just gonna take leftover foil and you're gonna put it upside down on here, okay? So colored side touching the toner. This will protect it as it goes through your mink or your laminator. And I'm gonna put this through my mink on setting four because it's a little bit thicker cardstock. So we're gonna feed that through. And again, this one is for toner foiling. Okay. You can also use the mink when it comes to your hot foiling. So if I do, let's just do this guy here. Hot foil, here I have hot foil jolly green number four. I just cut a square of that off. I can pretty much put this anywhere on here. Um, again, I wanna protect the black areas. And you can see I took the label off of the foil and put it there. So I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put this in my carrier sheet. Now this does not need a black square to stick to. So I can just put it right down. And of course, you can cut yours nice and neat. Here are those protective pieces I put. You'll see that it protected my black toner square and I didn't mess up the foil at all. And these are just um, scrap end pieces I had. So I wanna protect the printed black area by covering it up. Now, if you turn this foil over, it will it will turn the writing and the frame red. So we, we want it backwards for a reason, upside down, whatever you wanna call it. And you can only do this with toner foil as your scrap foil. Do not use hot foil, okay? But now, as I release this top carrier sheet, you'll see that that foil has stuck to the black. And of course I can now label this with the correct name and color and I can throw this piece away, okay? I like to do my swatching when I first get my foils because usually the, the end that has the sticker on it is usually kind of frayed from shipping or um, the sticker doesn't want to come off. So I like cutting off those end pieces um, they're kind of like the protective pieces before I get to the good foil. So this was using the hot foil in the mink. Same thing, use that red toner foil to protect my card. And we're going to let that cool down. You always want to let it cool down before you reveal it. Okay, and now this green foil has stuck. Now you might need to add a shim because there's no toner for this to stick to. Yeah, I probably should have added a shim, but you can see how that green started to transfer over. So let's try that again. Let's 
going to cover that up. And I'm just going to find a piece of cardstock. Here we go. Should give a little bit more pressure. I am going to show you how to do it on the hot foil machine, which is how it's supposed to be done for hot foils. Another option you have is to use tape. So you can do this with toner foils or hot foils. It really doesn't matter what you use. It's just a matter of swatching it out. And so here I have some double-sided tape. I just cut that down. And you can, again, do this with your hot foils or your toner foils. It does not matter. Tape will work on all of them. And then I'm just going to put that tape or put that foil down, burnish it into place. And then pull up whatever excess there is. And you can see that foil stuck on there nicely. Um, and again, this will work with toner foils or hot foils. Burnishing down that other side there. And now I have a nice swatch of that foil just using a piece of tape. It's nice and clean too, okay? So you can run the toner ones through the mink. You can run the hot foil ones through the mink as long as you have enough heat and pressure. Let's see if this worked out any better this time that we added a little bit of a shim there. You can use tape. You can use Decofoil Duo Gel um, because that you can just burnish on. Okay, so not enough pressure here. So I'm going to show you how to use how to do this on the hot foil machine itself. So let me switch out machines and I will be right back. Okay, I have my Gemini foil press warming up here. You can use any of your hot foil machines. And I do have the Pink Fresh Studio solid hot foil plate on there. And then I took that green one that wasn't sticking and I put that face down on there. And I put my lid on and I have it warming up at medium. So that'll take just a moment to do. And then I have another example here for you guys. But another option you have is to use some kind of a two-way glue pen. So the Zig two-way glue pens work great. Um this glue from Tombow. Tombow Multi Mono Liquid Glue, the green one. This has a little bit of a, a thicker end, so you can kind of smear this on. You want to let your glue dry, and it'll dry tacky. There's also TCW has a tacky dry, tacky when dry paste. Um, Deco Foil Duo Gel um, dries tacky. And you want it to dry completely, and then it's tacky. And then you're just going to do the same thing. You're going to take uh, a piece of your foil. And these are marked hot foil, and they're white for a reason, so that you do not mix up your foils when you are swatching them, okay? Um, so this is the new pink. Cut a little piece of this off. Okay, and then remember the black squared ones, these, these are for toner foils. Okay, and now that this is dry, it's tacky, it goes from blue to white when it's dry. I'm going to do the same thing that I did with the tape, is just kind of burnish that on there. And these are all ways you can apply foil, by the way. So these methods with the tape and the glue, you don't need heat, and you can use hot foil or toner foils with this method. So if you bought the wrong foils, you can use these methods with those foils. It doesn't matter. You don't need any special machines with these methods. And then we're just going to peel this off. And you can see that pink foil stays behind wherever I had the glue. So obviously, if you wanted it smoother, you could do the tape method 
or you could use a spatula and smooth that out. I just ran the pen across. So um, you can use tape, you can use two-way glue pen, you can use the mink machine for your toner foiling, and then also let me show you how to do the hot foiling. Now this method that I'm showing you here will only work on the hot foils which have the black labels. It will not work on the toner foils. It might work, but I doubt it's gonna work very well. Okay, so let me see here. We're pretty warm here. I'm just gonna turn the timer up to 15 seconds. We're gonna try to run this through and see what we get here, because we're pretty warm. And I'm gonna run this through my Gemini Junior. Now, if you have the Spellbinders Glimmer or the Go Press and Foil, you would follow whatever instructions you would normally do for your solid hot foil plate. There are different brands of solid hot foil plates out there, but they all pretty much work the same way. Let's lift this and see what it looks like. Oh, we got some toner sticking here. I did not even think about that. That's okay, I'm gonna show you how to clean it up. Don't panic. That was my mistake. I'll show you how to clean that off of there. All right, but you can see how that has stuck on there. I should have put a piece of paper down to protect that. All right, so if this ever happens to you, we're going to do it again, but we're going to do it the right way. The way you clean this up is 100% acetone. acetone is basically fingernail polish remover but you don't want any conditioners or vitamin E or anything like that on there we're just going to put a little bit on a paper towel here and that'll wipe off See how easy that is? So if you've ever foiled your plate or gotten toner on your plate, do not freak out. It's very easy to clean up and fix. And it's the same thing on those um, folders I showed you earlier that have the black marks on them. You clean them the same way. So that breaks down the adhesive. It does not hurt your foiling plate at all. Okay, so that's off of there. Uh, where's that folder at? Okay, so here's the folder that has the little toner line in there. See that? Comes right off. But you don't want to use fingernail polish that has conditioners or vitamin E or any nourishing agents. They will just cause everything to go fuzzy and hazy. Okay, that's how you clean it up. It's not a big deal. Okay, let's try that again. So I'm going to put my solid hot foil plate on here again. Ideally, you should probably be using um, a smaller image so that it only imprints there so here we have this and i should probably put like a thin piece of paper down to protect that let me grab something here hopefully that covers enough i'm going to hang some of it off of here 
So this bottom part will be on the plate. This part's going to hang off. That shouldn't affect it. Okay. Give that time to heat up. any better for us there we go much better so now nope did I not let it heat up enough nope not hot enough let's do that again oh probably because I had the paper on there okay let's let that warm up I'm gonna grab a smaller hot foil plate while we're waiting for that to warm up. Sure, I have a little heart or something that would be good for swatching. guys where are my warm-up plates these are all kind of large I need something a little smaller hold on design like this. see if that boiled any better. I'm going to take this plate off and go to the polka dots. So let's try this with the polka dots. I think we'll be a little more successful this way. So I've put the polka dots down. I put my foil down and I put my card down. So this will have little silver polka dots at the bottom. And again, we'll give that time to heat up. Let's see if this worked any better. So we do have some of that toner still sticking to the paper a little bit. 
I don't want to cover the whole sheet in foil because then the whole thing will get covered. But you can see there, now I have a nice swatch of that hot foil. I think, I think tape has been my favorite so far. Okay. Let's see how we do with these circles. This might be our best option. Okay. Uh, I probably should have stayed on the heat a little longer. But that's probably going to be the best way to do the hot foils is to find something with a small design. Put your foil on there. That way this isn't touching. The laser printed part isn't touching anything um, like it was here and it peeled off. So find a small hot foil plate design to put on there. Um, you can do the solid plate, but again, you got to be careful that that laser printed area might touch. The tape seems to be my favorite because that's just, number one, it's easy. I don't need to do anything but cut little pieces of tape. And I can go through and do all my toner foils and all my hot foils at the same time. And then you have the two-way glue or the paste. And then, of course, for toner foiling, you can just run the whole thing through your mink machine. So hopefully you find an option here on how to do your hot foiling swatches. Comment down below. One, do you do swatching of your foils? And two, um, how are you swatching your hot foils would be my question. Okay. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you learned something new and this comes out helpful to someone. If you're not subscribed to my channel, click the little button down below and the bell to get notifications when I post new videos. There is a discount code for Crafty Critter. I will put that down on the link for you guys. Thanks for watching and keep on foiling. Bye.